Okay, I just want to do a little short welcome video uh, for you all. Um, so I'm Professor Jason Leggett, and I will be your educator for this time period. Um, I think, you know, the main thing I guess I'd want you to think about um, is that this is not like a math class. Um, so, you know, if we assume for a second that 7 plus 3 equals 10, um, this class is more like, should 7 apples be treated the same as 7 onions? Um, so think about that for a second, right? In what ways are they similar? Uh, and then do they involve some principle that can be attributed to both? So if so, um, right, we want to kind of think about it that way, like we can group them together. Uh, I picked that example because they're very difficult uh, to pick together unless you start thinking about like geometry or s your shapes, right? You say, okay, they're both uh, fairly round. Um, they're both things you eat. Like you can start to come up with rules like that. That's what this class is mostly about. Uh, there's not going to be one right answer. There's going to be ways of organizing your answer. Um, so the other way of thinking about it is it's not like uh, a cooking class, right, with a list of ingredients. There's not a formula that you can follow um, and get the same answer every time. Uh, instead, we have to balance basically values, what people care about. Um, those are sometimes called norms. Uh, rules and rules can mean different things. A lot of times that that's what we mean by laws. Uh, and then behaviors, what we observe people actually doing, uh, which is usually very different than the values uh, and the rules. Um, and then we want to consider what's been left out uh, and why does this matter? Uh, and how, how do we include this in the whole kind of big picture? Um, so a lot of this is about how to think. Uh, so processes of legal reasoning. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll come over to this whiteboard at, from time to time or I'll give you a copy of it. Um, but you know, the main kind of thing is that there's going to be certain paths that you could take. Um, or you might even think about it like a zone. Um, so in most cases, the judge is like a family babysitter, uh, meaning that they're a member of the family and they're babysitting the children. Um, so there's a long line of family rules that that, that person is familiar with, uh, and then they'll be particular to that family. The judge isn't going to go to some other family and say, well, you need to watch your kids this way. Uh, that's where a lot of students make the mistake, right? They think there's universal rules. Uh, but if you've ever been to somebody else's house and see how they kind of take care of their children, um, you know, all bets are off, right? People take care of the children how they see fit. Um, in the other side of this, right, um, sometimes the judge is asked to make up a new rule. Um, and that will certainly be based on their family values, the thing that they you know, understand. And, and here I'm saying like the, the family of law school, right, the family of, of legal training. Um, but they have to try to come up with something that's going to apply to non-lawyers. And that's not very common, um, but that's something we'll look at in this class. Um, and I, I guess it's a really bad joke, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's not very common, but it's called the common law. Uh, and that's very different than the civil law. So the first example I gave you is something called the civil law. Um, where judges are asked to make new rules is something called the common law. Now, 400 years ago, it, it happened all the time. Um, but now, 400 years later, right, there's a set of rules uh, in the common law. One that I'll give you just off the top comes from the ancient Latin caveat emptor, which is buyer beware. Uh, so basically, you know, there is very little you can do uh, in court uh, if you if you didn't get a good buy, right? Um, and then there's exceptions to these rules, and that's largely uh, the third category of what judges are doing, um, which is trying to hold it all together. So those are really, to think about it this way, is through institutions, instrumentalities, and ideologies. So institutions are, again, going back to those norms, those values. What are those rules uh, that courts find important uh, to think about? Uh, instrumentalities are kind of the forms, right? So that could be a lawsuit, that could be legislation, it could be the common law decision like I gave you. Um, but a lot of times actually it's like letters from lawyers uh, saying, you know, cease and desist, or, you know, I'm warning you now uh, that you're in violation of copyright. Uh, and more and more it gets to the ideology, uh, which are the mental models or the ways that we think about law, um, which gets a people to behave a certain way, even though most of the time, to be honest with you, they're wrong. Uh, I was in a meeting today, for example, uh, and a philosopher uh, said, had something to say about the legality of the meeting we were having. In fact, there was no legality whatsoever relevant uh, to the meeting we were having. Um, but in his mind, right, he thought that there was some aspect of this. So people start to follow these rules without even really like thinking about them. 
uh, and those of us who are legal professionals, you know, have a hard time understanding what they're doing. So that's largely what this class is, is trying to see what's the gap there uh, between the way that judges and lawyers see the world uh, and then the way that, you know, 98% of the rest of the planet sees the world. Um, so you have to think about it finally, you know, it, this is the, the Western legal system uh, or the rule of law is only one of many options uh, for resolving conflicts. So you want to think about really specifically in political science, you know, this the social science kind of aspect of it is who benefits from these rules, right? Obviously lawyers and judges, but who else? Uh, and then who is excluded, right? That's the group that we really want to think about because that's really what either threatens the system um, or if the people aren't aware of the rules, uh, they kind of go about it, but obviously at their own detriment. Um, and then, you know, what are the consequences of having a system like this? Those are the big questions that I want you to kind of think about and I'll guide you through this process. Uh, now I'm gonna to get to just kind of a, a really very brief um, way of thinking about this class, um, just because I think this is what, you know, students tend to care about, right? Um, so, you know, the first questions that I've already gotten from a couple students um, is, you know, what, what's going on with this class? and and you know, I, I've taught long enough now where, you know, it, it's not always clear, right? So the rules are, right, and these are the, the, the CUNY rules, um, is that whatever it says on the CUNY first schedule, um, that's what that's what you have to do. Um, I, I don't make the schedule. <laughs> so, you know, if you wanted this class to be uh, meeting at a certain time uh, and a certain date, uh, you know, like Tuesday at 2 p.m., uh, you need to talk to your advisor and see if that class is available. If not, you can talk to the chair of the department, uh, whose name is Jacob Siegel. Um, but this class, as it's slated in CUNY First, uh, is no weekly meetings. Um, so that means you kind of do the work at your own pace. I give you suggested deadlines um, because, in my experience, students who fall behind uh, tend not to complete the, the class. So I want to try to keep you going. Um, but I'm not going, in most cases, right, with, with a few exceptions, um, you're not gonna get penalized for completing work late. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, over the last two semesters in emergency mode, um, I've been working around the clock. Uh, that's not something that's a good idea and it's not healthy. Um, so I'd prefer to keep my Friday through Sunday personal. Um, and so I'm probably not gonna email you right away. Uh, that means that I'll probably email you on Monday, right? If you send me an email on Friday. Um, it doesn't mean that that's gonna be true in all cases, right? If you have an emergency and you have to talk to me, we'll probably work something out. But by all means, do the work over the weekend. Um, but, you know, I, I just would prefer that you would uh, contact me during, you know, normal business hours. Um, my office hours will be interactive activities. Uh, after the last two semesters, I found students like this better. Um, I will film those, and if I offer extra credit, I'll give a Google Sheet that you can fill out um, to get that extra credit. So it won't be just the people who show up, uh, but that all gives us something to do. Otherwise, you know, it's not clear what we're supposed to do. Um, so I'll, I'll try to do it based on how people are, are kind of doing. We can always set up a time to talk if you need to talk to me, um, and there's the email. Uh, we're supposed to use our Kingsborough email. email. Let's, let's try it until it's not working and then we'll switch to a different email if that's better. Um, the thing I'd suggest, right, for students who do well in, in, in my class, if you keep track of the Blackboard announcements, um, you know, they're supposed to go to the email that you provided to CUNY, um, but you can always just go into Blackboard and check it. I have the app on my phone, right, so I see what you see. Um, I know it's not great on the phone. Again, there's not much I can do about Blackboard, um, but I can kind of keep an eye on how that's kind of working um, and try to give you kind of reminders when you need it. Uh, the other thing I'd mention is spring break actually falls week three, um, which is the earliest I've ever had it. Um, so I want you to think about that, right? If you get behind in the first three weeks, you're gonna have some time to make up uh, and I'm not gonna give you any work to do during that time. So just something to think about. Don't, don't stress out uh, in the first few weeks. Now, students always ask about grading, so I'd like to get it away, you know, done as quickly as possible. Um, you know, here, here's the challenge. Uh, you know, I've, I've been teaching now for over 10 years, um, and I've taught at different institutions. 
you know, on the one hand, it, you want to try to do the work, right? Um, and this might be particular to me. But my point here is that if you do all the work, I'd like to reward you for doing that. Um, and again, most of these assignments you should do on the suggested deadline, but if you do them late, it's okay. I'll still give you credit if you end up doing all the work. But here's the, the deal, right? I'll do that for you uh, if you don't bother me um, and asking me what work you did. You should keep track of the work you did. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty low bar, right? Um, I imagine that for those of you who work, you keep track of the hours you worked uh, so that if they didn't pay you for it, um, you'd have a problem, right? Um, so I, I don't, I can't, it's just not reasonable for me to try to tell everybody what's the work they, they did. Um, if you miss something major, so like you see these things in bold, these are the things that affect your grade. Um, I, I will let you know, right? I'll say you're, you're falling behind or you're at risk of failing. Um, but, you know, by and large, right, completing work is, is your responsibility. Um, if you're having trouble, right, I can work with you. Uh, but other than that, right, like there needs to be some give and take here. Um, those bolded items, I will put grades up uh, because they're graded in Blackboard. Um, and so, you know, something to think about. Now, I'm going to share a website over the uh, email and can you, and the Blackboard announcements, um, and I'll answer some some Q and A, right? Some some frequently asked questions. One of them will be like, why should I do these assignments? Um, other than getting the boost, right? Um, these are what help you prepare for the quiz. They help you prepare for your final project and what help you prepare for the final exam. Um, if that's not a good enough argument for you, then it's like, well, somebody's paying for this class. Uh, Learning is largely about activities, right? How, how you think about how you learn. Um, and then if that's not good enough for you, I mean, I guess the answer is then don't. Um, it, it's not gonna be the end of the world, right? Could you pass the class and not do any of the assignments? Maybe, right? We'll have to see. It'll be a nice social science experiment. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know how to right, respond other than um, this is the class, right? So like, this is the stuff we're doing. Um, in exchange for not grading you down for late work, uh, you know, I can't keep track of all of you then uh, over the course of a semester um, based on whenever you decide to complete the assignment. So those are the kind of trade-offs. My point here is that the bold, that's the important stuff. That's the stuff that the college needs me to assess you, right, and give you a grade. Um, a lot of the assignments, there's not a right answer, right? So it's like you read an article uh, and you have a certain opinion about it. Um, I've heard from students that some students get graded down for having an opinion that the professor doesn't like. Well, I'm certainly not going to do that, um, but I'm also not grading you right on your opinion about an article. Um, that doesn't seem to be very academic to me. Uh, the last thing is that I try to be as accessible as I possibly can. Um, so as you see, right, I, I've put things on Blackboard because students have asked for Blackboard. Um, I hate Blackboard. Uh, I think that it's ancient. I think that it's not very attractive. I don't think it's very functional. Uh, and as you see, every time that CUNY first goes down, so does Blackboard. Um, and sometimes Blackboard just goes down for no reason at all. And it's just unavailable. So to the left there, you know, you should see, I have a spreadsheet of all your work. Um, so I keep track of what you're doing and what you're not doing. On every single Google form, it comes to me automatically. Just like when you push call or text, right? Send on your phone. Um, I don't imagine, right, you sent a text to your mother and then you said, did you get my text, right? I, I hope you don't do that, that would be so obnoxious. Um, but it's the same thing, right? If you push submit on the Google form, I get it automatically. Um, so you don't need any kind of verification, in other words. Um, same goes for the emails, right? If you push send, then you got it. But most importantly, you, you need to keep track of your assignments, right? So keep a copy of your assignment just in case. Um, I've never had an issue. But I've heard of students having issues in other classes, and I ask them, well, did you keep a copy? And they say, no, <laughs> well, good luck, right? You're not gonna be able to prove uh, that you submitted the thing. So that's my kind of two cents on that. Um, also keep you know, your emails organized so that you have your sent box, right? Organized so you know which professor you sent to. Sometimes students send me uh, assignments, and they're very lovely assignments, but they're clearly not for my class. Um, 
especially when they're like a science, right? Like, so, well, wait a second, biology probably isn't right here. Um, I also do my YouTube videos, right? Like this one will be on YouTube. Uh, so you've got my channel there. Um, I'm on social media at Prof Jam Leggett if you care to go there. Um, the course information is right there, jasonmleggett.com and gc.cuny.edu. Uh, my personal space is you know, basically the same thing, but JJ Leggett. Um, on the website, I have kind of, I'll be updating it regularly, but I'll give some information about legal studies if you're interested in that as a career field. Um, I have a lot of student work that's been kind of an ongoing project. Um, and then I'll give Justice Academy resources for criminal justice majors who, who plan on transferring to John Jay. Um, sometimes there'll actually be stuff on there for folks that want to go to the Police Academy as well. Um, it's just a little bit harder to get the information um, you know, from our advisors. But uh, other than that, right, I think that's kind of the class in a nutshell. Um, if you prefer my website, great. Uh, things are a little bit more linear in that, in that um, format, so you can just kind of scroll on your phone. Uh, I look at the phone to see how it looks on the phone. It's supposed to be better. Um, if you prefer Blackboard, fine, I, I put that there too. Um, you know, you have options. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Um, and, you know, welcome to the semester. I, I feel like this is a pretty fun class. Um, and this is a subject that I've, I've studied for a long time, very long time. Um, and if you have questions about law school or you want to go into the legal profession, you know, reach out to me. Uh, if you have interest in going into other prof uh, careers in criminal justice, um, let me know that too. I can forward your information to, to people who would know how to help you. Um, but that's all I have. So I hope you all are